Tyson's first two opponents were reliable losers and gave him a chance to develop his confidence in the ring. His third fight against Don Halpin, a more experienced boxer, was his first real challenge. Yep, two fights, two wins for Mike Tyson. We're back in Albany. We're back for opponent number three. 23rd of May, 1985. Hard to believe Tyson's debut was just the 6th of March. He hasn't really crammed in hardly six minutes of fight action into his pro career so far. I wonder whether Don Halpin is going to extend Mike Tyson, where Hector Mercedes and Trent Singleton have failed to do so. This is one formidable young man, Mike Tyson. Many felt that it should have been him and not Henry Tillman to go to the Los Angeles Olympics last year. But it was Tillman, one fair and square, beat Tyson not once but twice. He went, he won the gold medal. Interesting to note that Tillman won the heavyweight gold, whereas Mike Tyson, of course, might have... Uh, had some ambitions had he been a bit of a bigger guy because he's not a big heavyweight the super heavyweight goal at la last year went to tyrell biggs tyson let's get this in perspective forget what the the press releases say he's only five foot ten some would have you believe he's six foot he's he's five foot ten he is not a big heavyweight he's only a kid yes he is going to fill out but it'll be interesting to see how he fills out already if you look at him close up there are great slabs of muscle on him so well we will have to see whether he fulfills the promise that he has shown in his only two professional fights in the blue tracksuit top there incidentally with usa on the back that's his trainer kevin rooney who was a pretty decent welterweight in his day referee just giving them a little briefing don halpin trying to give time from the eye and I am glad I tell you I am glad I am this side of the ropes and not that side of the ropes because Tyson looks little mean green trim in the white trunks on Halpin who has got a record of nine wins and 18 losses in a 27 fight career significantly not one of those nine wins has been inside the distance so he is not going to hurt Tyson can he survive Tyson We know from what we've seen so far, he is not a fighter who throws a lot of jabs. He likes to work in close, just puts out a little left feeler and then comes in swinging behind that. Halpin, nicely tucked up, good technique. But these, these body shots, they hurt, trust me, they hurt. It's very rare that you will see a fighter stop with a single body shot. What they do is they sap your strength. They will wear you down in later rounds. That was a little bit near the borderline. Tyson gets away with it. You will note he's an orthodox fighter, Tyson. Left hand, left foot forward, as indeed is helping. It's probably asking a bit much in a young fighter's fledgling professional career to put him with a southpaw just yet that'll come that'll come already we're showing seeing a different side of mike tyson tonight it's almost as if his corner have said to him listen you don't have to win every fight inside one round feel this guy out this guy professional fighter don halpin experienced 27 fights tyson has had just the two so feel this man out give him a little bit of respect probe for his weaknesses find out what his weaknesses are when you found out what those weaknesses are then you can exploit them Tyson notably slower just hark your mind back to those fights we saw just a few moments ago against Mercedes and Singleton Tyson exploded out of his corner for those two fights this a much more calm a much more measured approach from this young man originally from uh, New York City, now fighting out of the Catskills, where his mentor and father figure, Customato, has been raising him in the fistic arts. It looks as though, you know, that Halpin's going to get through a round. I hope I'm not going to eat my words. Tyson down on his heels. We saw him up on his toes in the opening round, first couple of fights. It's almost as if, as I said a moment or so ago, that his corner have told him, just extend this a little bit. Don't be in a rush to finish. 
And this is good opening round. Good opening round for both boys. Halpin, to his credit, he's come to fight. He's testing Tyson out. Got through with one or two good jabs. I still think Tyson is winning the round on the sheer volume of punches throwing. But uh, Halpin, he's no mug. Good first round. Round two. Mike Tyson's career, Mike first Tyson. professional fight. Uh, the white trunks in the left-hand corner nearest us. We're in Albany, in upstate New York. It's the 23rd of May, 1985. Take your eyes off the ring card, girl. Watch the fight. We've had a good first round between Mike Tyson and his third pro opponent, Don Halpin. And all the more applause and praise for Halpin in that he has succeeded where the first two Tyson opponents, Hector Mercedes and Trent Singleton, fail, in that he has heard the bell for the end of round one. Neither of those two gentlemen did. And it remains to be seen just how much Don Halpin, who's an experienced pro, I think his 28th fight tonight, it'll be interesting to see just how far he can extend Mike Tyson. Great things expected of Tyson. Customato, who, if you're a fight fan, will know was the guiding light behind the career of former world heavyweight champion Floyd Patterson. You will know that when D'Amato says this man can be a world beater, you've got to listen to it, you've got to respect it. But it's D'Amato will have seen things sparring that we, we haven't we haven't seen in Tyson's professional career because we haven't had a chance to see yet exactly what he's capable of doing. We can see he's a superbly conditioned athlete. Well, that's down to Kevin Rooney and the gym work. We know that he throws, he's a good short puncher. We haven't really seen him throw a jab worthy of the name yet. But then again, the perfect heavyweight has yet to be born. I remember once, the great Eddie Futch, trainer of Joe Frazier, sitting me down and telling me what Muhammad Ali's weaknesses were. Now, I was a fellow who thought Muhammad Ali didn't have any weaknesses until Eddie Futch told me, and when Eddie Futch had explained it to me, and you watched Ali next time, you realised the truth of what he was saying. So the perfect heavyweight has not been born, but maybe Mike Tyson might be, because that was a jolting little left hook that shook Halpin right down to his heels. He backs up, tries to hold, Tyson clubs him off again with the left. Now this is going to be a real test for Don Halpin. He definitely was hurt there, looks apprehensively at Tyson over his shoulder, plods gamely forward, Tyson just jinking side to side. Good upper body work from Tyson, looking for the opening, fires out a jab, misses. But again, these little hooks of his rarely do. Going back to what I was saying about Ali, never miss with a jab but was not that good, strangely enough, fighting inside. Now, Tyson is almost the mirror image of that. Haven't seen him jab effectively yet, but boy, when he gets within close range, you better watch out, because he is a bit good. And he's starting to get through to help him now, and he's starting to hurt him. Leading with a right, just switching to southpaw there for a minute. Leading with a right, right hand, right foot forward. Good right hand again from Tyson. Hasn't quite got his range yet, as the youngster. Far cry from those early days in Brooklyn. When he was a kid, by his own admission, he was a bundle of trouble waiting to happen. And who knows what would have happened if Customado hadn't picked him up and taken him under his wing. Let's not dwell on that. Let's dwell on the positive. Let's dwell on the fact that we might, we just might might be seeing a man who could go on to great things in this heavyweight division. End of the second, Tyson glares at Halpin. Halpin, he's having none of it, ignores him, walks back to his corner. Tyson almost affronted that Halpin had managed to go two rounds. Round three now of the scheduled six-rounder in Albany in upstate New York. Mike Tyson in the white, Don Halpin in the blue with the white trim. Two completed rounds. Tyson has taken them both quite easily. But Halpin has posed in the sort of thought-provoking opposition that uh, Hector Mercedes and Trent Singleton, the opening two opponents who folded inside the round, a pair of them haven't managed to do. And maybe Kevin Rooney 
in the Tyson corner and said, well, OK, you've worked this man out. Help him up a little bit now. Help him, a little, a little rueful grin. Snakes out of right. You saw Tyson's head go back there. Score one, helping. Once again, Tyson switched to Southport. Back to Orthodox now. Now that's a sign of supreme confidence, isn't it? A young man in only his third pro fight, effortlessly switching between Orthodox and Southport. Again, fighting out of the Southport stance. I think this is really just to see if he can against an opponent who, as I've already said, is not going to hurt him. Halpin has never stopped anybody. I'm not even sure whether he's any deck, whether he's ever decked anybody. So he's not going to he's not going to hurt Tyson. So can, Tyson can use this experience to just try out a couple of new moves because there is a big difference between the gym and the ring, as any pro will tell you. And he hurt Halpin there. He backs him up against the ropes. The more experienced man. Holds on, the ref having none of it, pulls him apart. And every now and then, when Tyson gets through with a shot, he really shakes Don Halpin. And you can sense that Tyson maybe now is looking for the one big shot. Tyson himself just holds on. He's backed up himself on the ropes, turns him well. Halpin. Wiley old pro, the chin tucked down, but he gets clipped with the right hand then. He will not be able, I tell you, to take too many of those. Tyson. Now starting to double up. Hooking off that jab. Again fighting out of the southpaw stance, which he's favouring increasingly more in this fight. Maybe he's realised that Halpin doesn't like it when he comes at him southpaw fashion. Crowd, unlike the first couple of fights, pretty quiet. Reacting to the good punch, but absorbed like I am, really, because, to be quite honest, having seen two one-round wins, I'd expected this to follow suit. I'd expected Don Halpin to be another sacrificial victim. Not to be. Three rounds he's gone. I don't think there can be too many doubts that Tyson has won all three rounds. And I would think that Kevin Rooney there in the blue tracksuit top is pretty satisfied with, with what he's seen. Tyson, in case it needs any saying, has never been remotely troubled at number four. Has got a slight problem. Great cheer, biggest cheers of the night. As the ring car girl straightens it out. And the fight fans are the same the world over. Show them pretty girl. Pretty girl gets the cheers. And the fighters for the moment are forgotten. Well, in the Halpin corner, they might, you never know, be harbouring thoughts of him being the first man to take Mike Tyson the full distance. Would be a first, wouldn't it? Round four then. Oh, good shot. That's a short sneak ride. Halpin's head jerked back. Now, Tyson has switched back to Orthodox for this round. He's uh, maybe had enough of playing around with Southpaw. Maybe it was just a little vanity exercise. Maybe Kevin Rooney has said to him, OK, boy, you've had your fun. Now time for business. Well, this is a much slower and much more measured Mike Tyson. And Albany to that good right hand, help him down. You behind the camera have the most perfect view of that. Only difference is you saw the punch. Don Halpin didn't. Mandatory eight. Early in the fourth. Can Tyson finish this? I think so. I think so. That's enough. Now that last right hand up, that was questionable. Tyson celebrates. I didn't like to see that because Halpin was down and the back of his head snapped against the rope and that could have been very dangerous. He's still a little bit dazed, is Don Halpin. Well, Tyson won. It was the manner of his victory, that one last right-hander 
and they're keeping helping. Now, this, this I don't like to see. This is a little bit worrying. Halpin took one punch too many. The referee, I don't think he could have done much more than he did, to be quite honest with you. And I'm sure we'll see a replay in a minute. Yeah, here we go. Now, this is the punch. The left hook that drives him across the ring. The fight was over then. Bang! That was the punch that caused all the damage. And the referee looked admonishingly at Tyson. I think he had stopped the fight by that point. It was the left hook, right hook combination that had finished it. Halpin was out on his feet at that point. If the ropes hadn't interrupted him, he would have been on the canvas. And that one extra right hook from Tyson, unnecessary, didn't like to see that. Got away with it. And I'm sorry to have to tell you, we're, we're looking at Tyson here, I'm sorry to have to tell you that Don Halpin is still down on the canvas. Now they will be keeping him down just as a precaution. The worst thing when a fighter gets knocked out badly, the worst thing you can do is try and get him back on his feet quickly. And these are experienced corner men, experienced ringside medical officials. And they will be just slowly, gently bringing Don Halpin round in his own time. But we haven't as yet, thankfully, seen any call for a stretcher. And Tyson now looking a little concerned, maybe trying to justify why he threw that last right hand up. The statistics will show that it was a fourth round knockout and he's a little bit concerned, sort of shaking hands with Halpin's cornerman. The cornerman may be remonstrating a little bit with Mike Tyson there. At the Halpin corner, not happy. The crowd, as you would expect, subdued. No, no fight crowd anywhere in the world likes to see this sort of thing. As I was saying, it will go round, it will go down in the records as Tyson's third straight win. But the manner of the win will maybe a question mark over it. <laughs>